All right, well, hello everybody. I'm Gage Harris from Iowa State. A little bit of a change of pace. Um, I'll be talking about a coupled spacecraft system and trajectory optimization utilizing both GMAT and OpenMDAO. Is this how this works? Okay, cool. So first, before I get into everything, I want to give you guys a quick overview on what I'll be talking about. First, I'll give some background on exactly what space mission design is and then give some relevant research on the topic. I will then be going into our own formulation where I'll talk about each component. First, GMAT. Um, then our rocket engine model, how we're using OpenMDO, and then finally what we developed, what we call SMOT. We'll then talk about a couple results where we ran some single point optimizations with various configurations, and then ending with a multi-point optimization. I'll then give a summary on all those results before finally going into the future work and the next steps in my research. So what exactly is space mission design? Um, well, in essence, it's the analysis and design of the desired path path for a spacecraft. Um, here to the figure to the left, we can see NASA's Artemis II mission in which they plan to do a crude free return tra trajectory in the next couple years. In this graphic, we can see those little colored circles and these are all objectives that need to be completed in order to create this path. But not only do we need to create that check trajectory to get the spacecraft from point A to point B, but we also need to create that spacecraft itself, including the size of it as well as all of its subsystems. So when that spacecraft does get to the point of interest, it's able to conduct some kind of scientific mission. Now when we add optimization into the mix for the trajectory side of things, we're trying to optimize some kind of cost function. This could either be total fuel burned or time of flight. While on the spacecraft system side of things, we want to optimize possibly the size, want to make it as small as possible, or one of its subsystems. However, both of these disciplines optimizations are usually done separately either do trajectory optimization or spacecraft systems optimization, as you'll see in these next couple studies. So starting with the spacecraft system side of things, this first study, Frank et al., actually similarly to what I did, used a surrogate model based on the rocket propulsion analysis tool to evaluate the performance of chemical rocket engines. This next study, Wong and his team actually optimized uh, CubeSat's full subsystem, including thermal control, attitude control, um, communications, energy generation, and things of that nature. And they coupled all of these for optimization, but with a fixed Earth orbit. These next couple studies on the trajectory side of things, Izzo and his team optimized interplanetary missions using a differential evolutionary technique, while these last two studies again looked at interplanetary missions, but used a genetic algorithm. And as you can see, both disciplines are done separately. You would either do trajectory optimization or spacecraft systems. And what I'm trying to do is use OpenMDO to optimize them both at the same time with the hope of getting some kind of benefit rather than doing those optimizations separately. Here we can see a very high level overview of the framework. Um, the mission we're optimizing here is a two finite burn interplanetary mission to Mars. The main thing you want to pay attention to here are those green rectangles and these are the components or the driving factors in the optimization. Starting with the bottom here, we have space tra spacecraft trajectory, pretty straightforward. This is where the trajectory analysis tool, or GMAT, will be located, while the engine burn Earth and engine burn Mars will be where a rocket engine model will be located. Everything above the components are unique inputs, everything to the right unique outputs. Another thing to notice here are those gray parallelograms, and these are um, the outputs of one component meeting the inputs of another, or where this coupled is happening and allowing me to do this coupled optimization. As you can see inside them, the engine components are outputting performance characteristics of an engine, namely thrust and ISP, and then these are being thrown back into the trajectory component. These next couple slides, I'll be going over these components in a little bit more detail. Starting with the trajectory analysis tool, or GMAT. So GMAT is an open source package developed by NASA, mostly used for mission design. Inside GMAT, you are able to configure spacecrafts with different force models and add various spacecraft hardware, such as propulsion systems and fuel tanks. Once the spacecraft is configured, you move on to the mission sequence. And this is where you're actually going to simulate the spacecraft. In the mission sequence, you can add various propagators with different force models to actually propagate that spacecraft. This is also where you're going to add any type of burns to change the trajectory of that spacecraft. Users are able to use GMAT in two different ways, either the graphical user interface, which is probably most popular, or the Python API, which is what I am using due to the way that OpenMDAO is written. However, the way I'm using the Python API, I can only change values within a mission sequence. I can't create it itself. That is why a pre-existing mission sequence must exist that I can read in and alter those values for optimization. 
and these uh, mission sequence have already been created by myself. Like I said, looking at a two finite burn interplanetary mission to Mars, you can see the inputs and outputs of this component here to the right. Inputs, pretty standard. We have magnitude and direction of burns, burn time, time of flight, and again, the constraints being pretty standard with a relative position and velocities of the spacecraft with respect to Mars. Now onto the rocket engine model, which is the actual subsystem that's being coupled here. Um, we did this by implementing a chemical rocket engine in Python or in turn OpenMDAO. Again, you can see the inputs and outputs in this table to the right. Again, pretty standard. We have chamber pressure, mixed ratio, throat area, and exit Mach numbers inputs with the outputs being the performance characteristics of that uh, chemical rocket engine. One thing to note here, I'm actually using the exit Mach number as an input rather than the exit area. And I do this to make the component completely explicit, or I can calculate all of the outputs based on the inputs without any type of iteration. However, doing this, I don't have full control over the exit area, and that is why an additional constraint is added into the optimization to deal with this problem. So in order to create the rocket engine model, first a surrogate model was created. And this was used to calculate the chamber temperature, specific heat ratio, and universal gas constant. In order to do this, 500 sample points were generated with various mixture ratios and chamber pressures. The rocket propulsion analysis tool was then run with these 500 sample points, and a radial basis function surrogate model was trained with the outputs of this RPA model. After the surrogate model was trained, I assumed constant composition in the nozzle and found all of the performance characteristics using these equations to the right here. At the bottom, we just have the mass of the engine, which is a formulation developed by Zandberg and is just a function of that exit thrust. So we used OpenMDO as the optimizer. As we all know, it's written in the Python programming language, hence why I use that Python API of GMAT. Main reason for using OpenMDO is that we were able to decompose very large scale optimization problems into those smaller components, those components being the trajectory and rocket engine model. Here you can see the N2 diagram um, of our model developed by OpenMDAO. You can see the trajectory components at the bottom with the rocket engine model or the engine burn components there as well, each having its unique inputs, those little green lines if you can see them, and the unique outputs, the more gray. For the trajectory component, all the outputs were computed using GMAT, while for the rocket engine models, all the outputs were calculated using that surrogate model, as well as the, those equations that I showed a couple slides back. So finally, we have the spacecraft emission optimization tool, and this is the actual Python interface that was created that actually combines GMAT and OpenMDAO open together. As I said, GMAT is that trajectory analysis tool, while OpenMDO acts as our optimizer, and the actual optimizer we're using is SNOP. So a Python run script is how to actually interact with SMOT, and this will tell OpenMDO what components we're going to use, or in turn, what mission we're actually going to optimize. This is also where you're going to edit any initial design variables and modify any constraints of the mission. Currently, there's only a two finite burn interplanetary mission to Mars component in SMOT, but I plan to widen the reach of these missions in the future. So now onto the results. Like I said, two finite burn interplanetary mission to Mars. Currently, no flybys are being considered, and Sun is the only gravitational body. Three different departure dates were studied. May and July 27th and September 8th, 2020, and these were just all taken from a port shot plot. Two different optimization types were run, single point with various configurations as well as ending with a multi-point. The objective is to reach Mars, obviously, with the lowest fuel burn possible, subject to a couple constraints. First, the relative position needs to be within 3,000 kilometers. Relative velocities need to be within 0.01 kilometers per second, as well as the exit areas between both burns must be the same because we're using that same engine for both burns. So onto the single point optimizations, five different configurations were run. Starting first with the trajectory only, pretty straightforward here, used a fixed RL10428 engine, namely the ISP in the optimization. Next, we have the fixed engine geometry. Here, there is some slight coupling between both disciplines. However, the engine geometry is fixed to the RL engine, but the chamber pressure can change. Next, we have the fixed engine geometry MR. Again, slight coupling. Engine geometry is fixed, but now the mixture ratio and chamber pressure can change. 
onto the coupled formulations. Here, full coupling between both disciplines. Now the engine geometry can change, but the mixture ratios between both burns must be the same. And the most complicated coupled MR, again, full coupling, engine geometry can change, but now the mixture ratios between both burns can change. You can see the optimization formulation for this most, most complicated case to the right here. We're trying to minimize the total fuel burned with the objective uh, design variables towards the top being for that engine and then towards the bottom being for trajectory with those constraints being those relative position and velocities as well as that exit area constraint. This next slide here, we actually see the results for the May departure date. Main trend we see here is as we go from left to right on the table, the fuel burn reduction does increase, which is expected because we're adding more design freedom into the optimization. One thing to notice here is that the fixed engine geometry is actually worse than the trajectory only. That is because the trajectory only assumes a best case scenario for the ISP, while the fixed engine geometry uses the exact same engine. However, it gives a more accurate ISP reading because it is changing based on the actual thrust that's being required. But that trend follows suit for the rest with the coupled MR being the most efficient and actually 25% better than the trajectory only. At the bottom here, we just have a convergence plot of that R mag showing how that relative position is changing throughout the optimization, finally getting to that constrained value of 3,000 kilometers. Here we can just see a couple trajectory plots. To the left, we just have the initial conditions fed into the optimizer, and to the right is the coupled MR final optimized trajectory. I only included one optimized trajectory because from this point of view, you can't really tell a huge difference in the two. Even between these two plots, the only main difference you're looking at is that 60-day time of flight. But as you can see, those thrust magnitudes are quite different and the fuel burn is more than cut in half. Mm -hmm. Here we can see the results for the other two departure dates. Um, nothing really new to talk about here because the, train, the trends are the exact same. For the July case, actually, the coupled MR is about 28% better, while for the September case, it's about 22, correct? Yeah, 22% better. Um, only main thing I want to talk about here is that for the, all the July fuel burns, these are actually less than the other two dates, showing that this is actually the best day to launch out of the three, while the September, all of these fuel burns are actually larger than the other two, showing that this one is actually the worst day to launch, with obviously May being in between the two. So one final single point optimization was run, and this is what I really wanted to compare against the coupled formulations. And this was doing the engine and the trajectory and engine optimizations separately. What I mean by this was first, a trajectory only optimization was run. The thrust magnitudes from this optimization were then thrown into an engine only optimization as constraints. The engine only optimization then tried to create the most efficient engine subject to these thrust magnitudes. You can see the formulation for that engine only optimization to the right here. Now we're trying to maximize the ISP or the efficiency of the engine with the design variables just being the inputs to that rocket engine model and constraints mostly being those thrust magnitudes. The fuel burn was just manually then calculated using the mass flow rate, which was a secondary calculation of the engine only optimization and then just multiplying that by the burn time of the trajectory only optimization. You can see the results for the separate optimizations to the table to the right. Um, these results were between the fixed engine geometry and the fixed engine geometry MR for the respective dates. Obviously, because of this, the coupled, coupled formulations performed better. I even included the most complicated coupled MR formulation for comparison. And as you can see, it performs far better, ranging between 16 to 20% better, in fact. And I really wanted to compare these separate optimizations to the coupled because the design variables, variables between both formulations are the exact same. The only difference is how you're doing the optimization, either doing them separately or in a coupled manner. And as you can see from those percent differences, there's a great benefit from doing the optimization in this coupled manner. So now on to the multi-point optimization. So the single point optimization created an engine that worked well for the specific date, but it might not work well for other dates. That is why the multi-point optimization combines all three departure dates. As you can see in the formulation to the right here, we're now trying to minimize the average fuel burn between all three dates. However, the only difference in the optimization formulation here is now each departure date has its own design variables. As you can see, now we have three chamber pressures, three mixture ratios, nine burn directions for a total of 49 design variables. 
The only thing that is consistent through each departure date is the throat area, AT, if you can see it. There's only one because we want the exact same engine geometry for each departure date. Constraints, again, very similar. We're adding now two more exit area constraints because, again, we want that engine geometry to be the exact same for each departure date. Here we can see the results for that optimization. The results aren't too important at the table. At the top here aren't too important right now. They will be in these next coming slides. The only thing I really want to emphasize here is how the engine is designed uh, for each optimization. Like I said, for the single point, the July was the best day to launch because it used the smallest fuel burn and in turn had the smallest thrust magnitudes. Because of this, it created a very small throw engine with a huge expansion ratio. While the September date used the highest thrust magnitude, so it created a bigger throw area with a more moderate expansion ratio with obviously May being in between the two. We expect that the multi-point will be in between the two extremes, which it was, but it much more heavily favored that September engine design, and we'll see why in these next two slides. So one final optimization was run, and this was really pegged to answer the question if the engine designed for one day would work well for the other two. This was done, for example, by using that July departure um, engine design, small throw area, huge expansion ratio, and using that engine design for the May and September departure dates. You can see that formulation, again, to the right, very similar to the coupled MR for the single point. However, now we're missing three design variables, the throw area and both exit Mach numbers, because these are design variables that are actually changing the geometry of the engine, and these are now fixed because they have been previously calculated but everything else in the formulation is almost identical. We can see the results of this final optimization here. Um, on the diagonals, we just have the coupled MR formulations for the single point because we're using the engine di design for a date on that specific date, so this diagonal is going to be the most efficient, but every other entry is just using the engine design of a different date. Main thing, I guess the only thing I really want to talk about here are those NA terms and these were infeasible solutions due to design variable limitations, mostly due to the chamber pressure of the earth burn due to engine sizing. So what I found was that the single point optimizations would create an engine for the specific date and no larger. For example, as you can see for that the July, July used the smallest thrust magnitudes, so it created an engine that could deal with these, but not the larger ones required by May and September, while the September date required the largest thrust magnitudes so it created an engine that could deal with these smaller May and July dates, while finally the May could deal with the smaller July, but not the larger September. So this really shows that the single point optimization might not only perform poorly for different days, but some might not even perform at all, showing the need for that multi-point optimization that finds an engine that will work for each departure day. So in summary, um, we developed an efficient method to both optimize a, a spacecraft system's trajectory um, and system at the same time. Um, as we saw from those trends, um, the more design freedom we give the optimization, the better fuel burn reduction we will actually achieve. It actually ranged between 16 to 20 percent better than those separate optimizations. And we do plan to add more spacecraft systems into the coupled optimization framework to enable larger design freedom for more efficient spacecraft missions. So that is what is, that has been done. Now I'll talk about a little bit about the future work. So our future work, we plan to develop the capability con to consider discrete variables as well. So to the left here, we have the current framework, two finite burn interplanetary mission to Mars. One burn is used to escape Earth. Second burn is used to rendezvous with Mars. And this is the exact same for each configuration and each departure date. However, we want the framework to look more like something to the figure to the right. Here now we have an interplanetary mission to Saturn, but it's not simply going straight from Earth and then arriving at Saturn. Instead, first we're going to fly by Venus, then fly by Mars, and fly by Jupiter before finally getting um, to Saturn. And even between all of these flybys, there's additional burns um, implemented. And these are the discrete variables that we want to implement, both number of flybys and number of burns, because this will be variable between each, each mission. One mission might be best for with just four burns and no flybys, or another mission might be best with two flybys and two burns, and this variability is what we want to include um, into the framework. 
so this is, as you can see here, this is the proposed framework in order to do this. Um, there will be a two-level system, the upper layer a genetic algorithm with a lower level open MDAO layer, which will house that coupled framework which has already been computed. Um, the upper level genetic algorithm we plan to populate um, a solution, uh, create a population of solution spaces. And each solution will have the possibility of containing a different architecture for a specific mission. For example, that first sample could contain that easiest to finite burn um, framework. The second could be, again, two flybys or three burns and then so on and so forth. All of these architectures will then be fed into the open MDAO layer where the open MDAO layer will optimize that specific architecture. This solution will then be fed back into the genetic algorithm upper level for evolution. This process will then repeat over and over again until a final converged solution is found. And hopefully this solution is the global optimum rather than just the local optimum, which I have been finding before, and really hoping that this will widen the reach on the design space moving forward. Now this is all that I have for you. However, um, our lab also does other aircraft multidisciplinary optimization, um, including UAV propeller, aerostructural, as well as coupled wing propeller optimization, and these will be presented in tomorrow's conference. But with that, that is all I have, and I can answer any questions that anyone has for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gage. I, I really appreciate that presentation. I think it's really important for, for us as a community not to just realize that, uh, like, we, we have a big uh, aircraft focus, mm -hmm. um, aero focus here, and I feel like your presentation helped us uh, round out to see, you know, what people are doing in, in spacecraft as well. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Yep. Uh, do we have uh, questions, questions from the audience? I, uh, a couple of, uh, first a comment, um, I would, suggest you look into, uh, you're using GMAT, there's another tool out of uh, Goddard uh, called the EMTG. EMTG, the Evolutionary Mission Trajectory Generator, that's similar to this, yep. this stacked layer that you're talking about, um, so they might provide some good insights for you there, but they don't do the multidisciplinary aspect of it. Yeah, the, the only reason didn't really use EMTG was their documentation is not as well developed as GMAT, so we could learn a lot more from GMAT than we could EMTG because there's a couple other uh, graduate students working with EMTG and they said it was just a complete pain, not even trying to compile, but trying to learn how it works. And I guess that's the main reason um, we're not using EMTG, but. I can sympathize. Uh, the other thing is um, it would be interesting if you started looking at uh, electric propulsion, solar, yep. solar electric propulsion, just because the trajectory in those situations tends to be more tightly coupled to the vehicle design. Yeah. And since we're all you know, giddy about coupling systems more tightly together, that might be. Yep, so that's, again, I didn't include that as future work too, but our plan is to first hopefully get this genetic algorithm or discrete variable things start working, and then we want to also look at um, electric propulsion, because I think in my summary I said we want to expand, uh, expand to more uh, spacecraft subsystems, and that's the first one we want to implement as well, as electric propulsion as well as like energy generation, because like you said, the coupling is, much more relevant to the trajectory rather than just this chemical rocket engine. Thank you. Nice talk. Yeah, I have a yeah, question. So, um, so did you, uh, uh, whenever you formulate the uh, co-design of uh, control side and the uh, physical system side, uh, did you uh, try uh, nested formulation versus uh, simultaneous formulation? Because uh, in my previous experience, whenever you have uh, like uh, dynamic system that has uh, less computationally expensive than other uh, disciplinary domains, or usually nested formulation give you uh, more computational efficiency. So did you, uh, I, I was also wondering if you looked for that route. So when you mean nested formulation, do you mean the, I guess? Uh, within, uh, within uh, so outer loop of a uh, system uh, optimization, you have another uh, optimization algorithm running inside the loop that solves the trajectory optimization. So rather than doing them that's the, separately? That's the sequential mode that, yeah, I think you're suggesting sequential optimization. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, sequential is uh, solving one 
and uh, doing another and uh, looping back, but uh, nested formulation is while you are uh, running the outer loop uh, optimization, you have another optimi optimizer uh, running inside to solve the trajectory only. Like a, like a collaborative optimization or something. So is that the genetic algorithm upper level open? Up, that's not what you're talking about? No, no it's, it's, uh, it's within, within just uh, the, the single point optimization. So you're saying like do the trajectory by itself without the engine? Uh, within the engine optimization loop, uh, you can formulate the trajectory optimization like inside a, that. It's like having a top level optimizer that then itself has to finite difference across a lower level optimizer. Okay, no, I guess so we haven't looked at that, uh, but that could be the next uh, thing to look at as well. Yeah. We've just done, I guess, the formulation that I've shown you today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is kind of a specific question, but you mentioned that you, instead of making the, I believe you said instead of making the exit area a design variable, you made the mock exit at the mock exit, number. exit mock a design variable so that it wasn't implicit, and then yep. you added the area as a constraint, which I definitely understand. That makes sense. I'm wondering if you looked at it both ways, because <laughs> this could be a naive question, but it seems like that might be a situation where you don't know a priori which one would run faster, which one would run more efficiently. Did you just assume that getting rid of the solver would be better than Yeah, without the just that iterative process, we just, I guess, it was more of an assumption that without that, it would just run more computationally efficient. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, no problem. I think, I think what you're saying is the word adjoint is scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, very interesting problem that you're uh, trying to solve. Um, my question is related to, I mean, you want to generalize the approach and have this bi-level optimization kind of problem, right? Like you have the genetic, the double layers. Yeah. Yep. So, but what, what if you try and do like, what's the order of magnitude, say, of the different possible combinations of your discrete variables? Because potentially this could also be done manually with a multi-start optimization, right? You just pick, oh, I want three flybys and three burns. So mm -hmm. what's the... Just uh, doing it manually rather than having yes, upper level exactly. genetic so algorithm. How, how many possible kind of like discrete combination could you have in for this problem? So we just started looking into the genetic algorithm upper level, so I don't have an exact figure for you, but it would be very tedious, I guess, doing everything manually because you can see just for that September, not September, that Saturn um, trajectory, you can get all kinds of different architectures just for that specific mission. And like we also want to do, we want to look at other missions as well. So I guess the genetic algorithm will just make the optimization process a lot less tedious rather than just having to manually get all these different kind of architectures together. I think we have time for one more question. So you mentioned though the bi-level optimization with the GA on the top and, and yep. OpenMDAO. So there's some precedent for doing that in, in OpenMDAO. Justin would know more than Yeah, I, but unfortunately I didn't get here till late last night, so I didn't know that was an actual thing. So um, I, I heard that there yesterday. Was this, this is the MEAGO code, right? From, oh, you did talk about it. Okay, but that code used ego on the upper level rather than a GA. You might think about that because ego codes can handle those discrete variables and they're substantially more efficient than Yeah, because I think that's what we were actually talking over there and Justin kind of said he wasn't a big fan of the genetic algorithms. Okay, so you So that, get, like I said, we're just, um, we're always, we're open to new, I guess, different ways to handle those discrete variables and that could definitely be, because we're not stuck on the genetic algorithm. That was just, um, that's what a lot of people use for interplanetary missions is that genetic algorithm or the hidden gene genetic algorithm. But obviously, if there's a more efficient way to deal with those um, mix of discrete and continuous variables, we're always open for that idea. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you, Gage. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you.